2004 Honda Accord. The 2.4 engine. Issue is, uh, it's got a, we believe it's got a parasitic draw on it. They leave it for, I don't know, two, three, four days. It won't start. So it's got a newer battery in it. You can see from November of 2020. So what we're going to do is we're going to check for a parasitic draw. See if it actually has one. They say no more than, you know, 80, 85 milliamps. I know like the Mopar Jeeps and stuff, no more than 30, 40. Uh, Chevy's 40 or 50 or something like that. So we're probably looking for around 40 or 50 milliamps max for this car. So we're going to do a parasitic draw test. So we're going to get everything set up and I'll show you how I set that up and what we're checking for. All right. So we got the DMM, which is grabbing the digital multimeter. We're going to hook that up. We're going to hook it up in series to the battery off the negative cable. When you hook that up, you have to have your black in the ground and then your red in the the amp hole, the A hole. You're gonna set it to amperage in series. So on this, we're gonna put a hose clamp on there so we can basically put the end of the prong right here down inside of there and clamp it. And then the other end will alligator clip onto the battery cable and it's going through the meter in series, which I'll show you. But what I wanna do is make sure there's no hood switch on this vehicle. If there was, we'd wanna depress that. What I also wanna do is look through the vehicle as far as make sure the door jar switch is shut, pushed all the way in. And what I like to do is trip the actual latches. You grab a flat blade screwdriver. Steve, I want to trip all the latches because I'm going to have the trunk open, trip all this in case there's a light on in the trunk. We'll trip the door latch because sometimes the door jar switch is in here. We don't have to trip this one because the door jar switch is here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and trip these latches. So I just take a screwdriver here. And I'm going to move, move that over. My assistant will try to film for me. I'm going to trip this latch. Spring loaded. Ah, almost had it there. You know, in a second. That's my son calling me. I swear every time I film, make a video, he calls. So, there you heard it strip. There we go. Sorry, now it tripped. So that's tripped. So now we want to go back. Same thing. Trip the door one. Grab that clamp, Steve. Trip that. That way nothing's a jar. And then we're going to Put the clamp on this switch right here. There. Now the interior light, the car thinks it's shut off. Or the doors are closed. The trunk's tripped. And now we're going to hook up the DMM in series. You ready? All right. Yeah, go ahead and hook it up. So can see it's drawn 0.2 that's now it's 0.1 that's 130 milliamps so we got it going through the meter coming back out to the cable in series so what we're going to do it's 130 milliamps you want to let it set for you know 15 20 sometimes 30 minutes for all the modules to shut down um, and if it stays at this then we definitely have a draw so i'm just gonna pause the film for now and come back and we'll let it sit for 15 20 minutes up to 30 minutes and we're back it's been 20 30 minutes um we're still at 130 milliamps 0.13 of an amp so now we got to start pulling fuses so my assistant is going to pull fuses one at a time until we see this draw go down it's going to start with these here start pulling them when he pulls them we're going to watch no change 
Next one. No change. I mean, a little bit, 10 milliamps, which is nothing. Next one. No change. So he's been going through all these. He did all these. Now he's going to start pulling these and see. So pull the 40 amp one. Well, there it changed. Put it back in. Pull it out. There's our issue right there. So that's a 40 amp fuse. Where's the cover for that thing? So if you look, that 40 amp fuse, which is 15, 15 40 amp is backup ACC. Well, it's not backup lights, it's backup accessories. So we're going to see in power distribution where this backup accessories fuse goes to next. And maybe it goes to a fuse block in the vehicle and see what circuit it is and we'll continue to troubleshoot. So now i got to pull up some schematics. So I'm in the Honda service data. We're going to go under hood fuse relay box. And then we're going to go to component index. And then I'm going to view this image. So 15 is right there. So if we scroll down. 15 is backup accessory, 40 amp, fuse 7 and underhood fuse box, fuse 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and underhood dash relay box. So it looks like this fuse powers other circuits under the dash. We need to look at diagram 10 dash 2. So let me pull up that. So now we're going to go to power distribution, fuse 15. Pull up this schematic. We want the under hood fuse 15. And if you look here, pull up the diagram. Under hood fuse relay box. Where are we at? Fuse 15 powers up. Fuse seven, seven and a half in the relay control module. And it also powers up the under dash fuse relay box. Fuse under dash fuse relay box, fuse five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now we can go to these fuses, pull those one at a time, and see which one drops it down. And then we can just go after that circuit. But before we do that, so we go under the fuse or under the dash, this fuse seven here, seven and a half amp. If you look in here, oh, where'd it go now? Right there. Fuse seven it focuses. Oh my God, this glare is so bad. Fuse seven, seven and a half amp backup accessories so now we can go ahead and pull that one just to make sure so we got the other one back in the 40 amp let's pull that seven and a half amp one go ahead and pull this one see if it drops we already did this why would it drop nope do the other one just to verify It's just 10 milliamps, don't care, that's fine. So I put all those back. So we know now we have to go under the dash and look at those fuses. We're gonna pull five, six, seven, eight, nine. And see which one drops it. So we gotta get under the dash and start pulling fuses, which are down in there one at a time and see which fuse and which circuit it is. And once we find that circuit, then we can go off the next diagram to determine where our draw is. All right, so my assistant's trying to get his body in there. Go ahead and pull number five. Did you pull it? Yes. Nothing. Okay, put it back in. Now go six. 
Nothing. Put it back in. No, seven? Seven's harder to get at it, I think. But I, mean, I would imagine looking like on that little sheet. Is that seven? Yeah, it dropped to 50 milliamps. Put it back in. Pull it out. Okay, so that's seven. Seven is our issue down the 50 milliamps. That's within our range. You can put it back in. So now what we got to do is if you look, fuse seven is our circuit that we need to go after. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go pull up that diagram. All right, so back into power distribution. And then we're going to go to fuse seven. And then we're going to go to fuse seven under dash and pull up this diagram. And then, all right, so under dash fuse relay box, fuse seven goes over here, not used. Fuse seven goes to the, not used, it goes to the MICU. And then it also goes down to the power window master switch. And then it also powers up. Doesn't She doesn't have navigation on this car. It goes to the immobilizer controller. Goes to the gauge control module. And then it goes to the combination switch control unit. So if we unplug one, out of, the, one of these at a time and see when the draw goes away, then we know that's where our draw is. We got to start troubleshooting it down to that. So we're going to have to do some more research and uh, start pulling these components one at a time and see where the draw is. All right. So now what we're going to do is we got the Max Assist Ultra hooked up with the VCMI plugged into the car. We connected via Bluetooth. You can do Wi Fi, you can do a cord. But what we're going to do now is we're doing a topology scan. Basically, it shows you what bus each module is on. So we're on the LIN bus there. We can go to list. We're just doing a full module scan to see what uh, if there's any colds in here. Not that's going to help us with the parasitic draw. It may or may not. But we narrowed it down in the earlier part of this video to it could be the window switch. It could be the combination switch it could be the micu which is the multiplex system which controls the door locks interior lights and all that so where, what i want to do is get into the bcm because there is a code in here we'll get once it's finished scanning all these modules we'll see what code it is i want to see if these door jar switches are reading the correct state for example if it's saying that it's sending a signal to the door is open and it's actually closed then that could be our draw so we want to eliminate that before we start unplugging modules it's just a lot easier to troubleshoot it that way so we'll let this thing continue to scan like i said it's got topology this is the new maxisys ultra it's got your list there you can do split screen on this thing it's a pretty awesome scan tool it's got the j pass through 2534 device you can use that vcmi for it's got a four channel oscilloscope it's got a dmm digital multimeter it's got a function generator um it's got a can bus obd check it's got all kinds of stuff so throughout my videos i'll start using the scan tool more than the 906 one i have so we'll go see what code is in here once it done once it is done scanning all right so it's done scanning it's got one of the abs one in the body control module you can go to report from here you can go to list and go in each module so we can go to report you can put mileage in if you're trying to track it i'm just going to skip that there's your Honda 04 Honda Accord the VIN. But ABS battery voltage trailer. It's probably in the past when they had a weak battery. But the other one, the body, the BCM, driver's power window position detects circuit malfunction, permanent DTC, which that window switch is part of the, the driver's window switch is part of the circuit from the fuses that we're trying to troubleshoot. Fuse 7 here and then fuse 7 under the dash I'm not saying that's the issue causing the draw but it's curious to see that there is a code in there for that 
What's cool about this is if you go into like list and you went to this right here, you can click intelligent diagnostics. It'll show you if there's a TSB, some repair assistance, if there's any data in here, it goes through a bunch of that. So if there's any code specific data, you can look at that. All this stuff's being updated all the time. So we'll take a look at that and get some more live data pulled up and go from there. All right, so you can click on intelligent diagnostics. Like I said, you can pick there's the two codes, like battery voltage failure. Sorry about this bad glare. But you can pick DTC analysis that tells you, you know, bad battery or AC generator. Could be. I mean, you take this with a grain of salt. They're trying to import service data into the scan tool. But like for the driver's window switch, you can, can help you troubleshoot some stuff. Of course, you have to be connected to the internet. It gives you some description, causes. Take it with a grain of salt, obviously. So, what we'll do now is continue to troubleshoot it. All right, so we can go into the body control module. And if you go in here, see he's making bacon. You can go to B can information, check connected control units. This will tell you which ECs are on the B can, which the MICUs on it. The gauge control module, the relay module, the combination switch and the power windows module is all on that can B, which is happens to be, if you remember looking at the diagram, the wiring diagram earlier in this video, it happens to be what's powered from fuse seven here and powered from fuse seven under the dash. And those are the modules that are on B can. And if you go back, you can go to B can information and all just this tells you, here's your uh, unit information, like the MICU, it tells you what it's equipped with and all that stuff. But if we go to, say, door locks, we're going to look for a status. So the trouble codes will be the same code I showed you earlier. B1140, driver's power window switch, driver's power window position, detect circuit malfunction. Go live data, I'll look for statuses. Make sure everything's off. The seatbelt's on. We plug it in, it goes to off. But like front passenger door switch, if it was on, that would be causing a draw. So that's what I'm looking for. And I've already looked through all these. Like there's the key switch that should be on. Driver's door unlock is on because it's unlocked. But like if your door jar in here was saying it was on when it was actually shut, that would be an issue. And we did the same thing for the lighting all the stuff we did in here and they're all normal but what we want to look at because the b unit or what's on that control module let me go back is we want to look at these here i'm going to unplug this one first and see because that's the easy one to get to and see if our draw goes away if it does or it doesn't you know if it doesn't we know that's the issue if it doesn't we'll go to this one this one and so forth the mobilizer is part of this, which is part of the MICU. If we can troubleshoot everything down, it could be the MICU that's actually bad. We hope not, but we'll go from there. All right, so 130, 140 milliamps. We're at 130, 140. And we got the door jar switch closed. We're going to go after this module first because this is a module. And that's the code of called out in the scan tool, as well as this is part of the BCAN system, according to our scan tool. I don't care about this connector here. That's just for the window or for the mirrors, electric mirrors. This one, if you're if I unplug this, I'm gonna unplug this thing or the connector. Like Steve, you can stop eating over there and come over here and film. You can hold the you can hold the camera now. So hold that on there. I'm gonna unplug the switch. Go get it here. And then you'll see it drop. And their draw is gone. I'm gonna plug it back in. It goes back up. So that is our draw which it's not, we don't believe it's our MICU, 
the MICU multiplex controls this. Um, but at least we know this is the issue. So now we got to, and we also had a code for this. So now we got to find a new one of these parts, see if it requires programming. I'm not sure if this does or if it's plug and play. I have to do some research. But that is the issue with the draw on this car. So we proved this, the window switch that's causing the draw. Um, but now what happens is when you actually hit the window switch to roll the windows up and down, it goes through the MICU, which is the multiplex system. So those buttons send a signal to the MICU to roll down the windows. To prove it's not the MICU, I'm going to go to active test under power windows. Power windows active test. I'm in the MICU. I'm going to go to left rear window down. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit OK, and then the window is going to go down. See, it just went down. And then I'm going to hit left rear window up. And then the window is going to go up here. So I'm going to hit OK. Watch the window go up. There it did. So that proves the MICU is good. So we need a window switch. We're going to get one of those ordered. Put it in. Make sure the draw is good. The only thing you got to do after that is when you go to adjustment, when you put the new switch in. There's no programming required, but you can reset all the windows up and down stops. And I believe you got to reprogram the key fobs into that switch as well. So that is it for this video for the parasitic draw. It was a bad window switch uh, causing the issue on the uh, MICU multiplex system. For this 2004 Honda Accord with the 2.4 liter.